Welcome back to Biotechniques on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to talk about the principles of gel extraction. And in the previous couple of videos, we've been talking about PCR amplifications and running a DNA gel, which is an agarose gel. Um, but what happens if you actually run a sample after you PCR, amplify it, and you end up with two bands like this? Sometimes this actually happens. Sometimes you can have more than two bands. And this is a really big problem if you actually want to then go and clone, uh, let's say, this top gene right here, this bigger one, 10,000 base pairs. 10 kilobases, uh, what happens if you want to clone this into an expression vector and force its, the expression of its protein in a bacterium? Well, the problem with this is, is that you've got two bands here. It's not pure, so you're going to get a mixture of products and probably some nonsense, so that's not good. If you wanted to directly sequence this, well, you've got two DNA sequences here two different ones. And so, again, when you se sequence it by the Sanger method, which is usually what you do, uh, you're going to get a nonsense chromatogram because you're sequencing two different segments here, two different genes, and the, g the segments may overlap and it's going to produce nonsense and it's unreadable. So you're not going to get any uh, good sequences with that. And if you wanted to do restriction digestion, again, you've got a mixture of products, so you're going to get um, a bunch of mixtures of, of digestions, and so that's just not good. So if you have more than two bands, you generally want to do a gel extraction if really any of these things are going to be in the future of your experiment, whether it's cloning, uh, sequencing applications, or restriction digest. Okay, so how does a gel extraction work? Well, let's suppose I just did a PCR amplification, and this top gene right here, this one that's at 10,000, let's say that's the gene that I want. That's what I want, okay? This other one down here is just uh, it's just an artifact. It, it's there, and it was amplified, but I don't want this. I only want the top one. So what I need to do somehow is I need to isolate this band up here and get rid of this one. And a gel extraction accomplishes that, and they're actually pretty good, pretty efficient techniques. So I did this PCR amplification. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to make a thicker gel for the gel extraction. So when you do a normal uh, gel after a PCR just to verify that it worked, generally the gel that you that you make is fairly thin, um, and you don't use you don't put much DNA in this well. Um, you some sources will actually say just to put about five microliters and that's it. Some sources will say less. So it depends on your lab, but you're not using a lot of DNA in this well. So when you make this thicker gel and you pull these combs out that make the wells, the wells are much deeper because the gel is thicker. And that allows you to add much more DNA. So generally when you're doing a gel extraction, you add a lot of the DNA um, from the PCR reaction that produced this. And then what you do is you electrophoresis it. Now, um, this is not actually physically smaller. I just sh shortened it down so that it's for the sake of space. But whenever you electrophoresis in the thicker gel with more DNA, you should get something that looks identical to what you did in the PCR after the PCR reaction. They should look identical because you're electrophoresing the same sample, it's just you electrophoresed more of it. So there shouldn't be any difference between these two. And that might not make a lot of sense. Why would you go ahead and you, and you electrophorese this again to get something identical? Well, now you've actually separated these two bands, but you've separated a lot of it, sometimes even 20 microliters of it. So now what you're going to do is you're actually going to do the gel extraction. What I want to do is I want to somehow physically cut out this band so that I'm only dealing with this one and this bottom one at 500 base pairs. I'm just going to leave that behind. I don't want this. I only want to deal with this, so I'm going to, I'm going to somehow try to isolate this top band. And there's a there's a couple of general ways to do this. One way is to actually physically cut out this band. Um, some people will actually use a razor. There's different tools you can use. Just physically cut it out, and you usually you know, deal with it from there. Another way that you can do it, which is the way that I've done it in the past, is using a gel extractor tip like this. They're sort of like small disposable pipettes, but the end right here, this is the part that penetrates into the gel. It's kind of elongated, and it, you stick it directly into the gel right here, and you can actually suck up the gel into this uh, chamber right here along with the DNA. And the nice thing about these, uh, these tips like this is they're disposable, number one. They're sterile. 
And then the other thing is that they're, the way they cut into the gel, it's very clean and very efficient. Um, if you're trying to cut it out manually with like a razor, um, there is some uh, potential for contamination, especially if this band was really close to some other bands. Um, it's just a problem. These are much more efficient, and I personally like these. And then you would take the DNA from within here, uh, this band right here at 10,000 base pairs, and you can use whatever kit or protocol you use for a gel extraction. Um, a lot of times you can just order a gel extraction kit, that's what they'll use. It's a bunch of reagents, etc. And ultimately what it does is it purifies this band. Now, if you took out only this band, then the resulting product of the gel extraction should only have this band. So if I then verify the results of that gel extraction by by, by another electrophoresis, notice how I only have that band at 10,000 base pairs. This one that was around 500 is gone. And that's what I want. So what the gel extraction does, in, in so many words, is you, you, you selectively remove the band that you want, do a bunch of protocols on it, which it comes in the kit, and then when you verify the results of that by gel, you should only have this one. And again, this gel extraction, the results, this, uh, this uh, gene that you now have isolated, you can directly send uh, that off for sequencing, um, and you should get some decent results, i.e. you should get a good chromatogram, a good sequence. And so that's the principle of gel extraction. So again, in conclusion, if you're going to eventually go to cloning into a, an expression vector, or you're going to sequence that or do a restriction digestion, you really should not have a mixture of products right here. And so especially if you've got strong bands like this at 500 that you don't want, you extract physically this band um, from a thicker gel, and then you run the gel extraction protocol, which is in a kit of some kind. And then when you verify it by a gel, another one, which doesn't have to be a thick one, this can be a thin one, you should only have the band of interest, and then all others should be gone. And then uh, whatever this is, you can send that off for sequencing directly. All right, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.